Hey everyone, Tony from TN3 Studios. Today I'll be showing you how you can add this creative touch of colors in your render. Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is all about colors and how you can add colors on shadows. Now colored glass has always been possible in Enscape, but with this effect, the natural sunlight that travels through colored glass material will now produce colored sun shadows. With this new feature, you are able to combine light and colors in a way to highlight interior spaces. So you'll be able to recreate this style of realism inside Enscape. Before we continue, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. This helps with the growth of the channel and so you don't miss the next time we drop a new video. The first step is that you need to run Enscape 3.5.3 plus. So if you're not running the latest version, I suggest you check Enscape's download page and get the latest version. Secondly, you want to enable the hardware features that come with this update. Go to your general settings. Under rendering hardware features, you will see two new settings, ray trace on shadows and NVIDIA Shadow Denoiser. Make sure both of these features are enabled. Next, you want to make sure you have the proper lighting in your scene, specifically natural sunlight. You can do this using either sunlight or HDRI. If you're using sunlight as your main source, head over to the atmosphere settings and make sure your sun brightness is above 0%. This is going to increase the sunlight in your scene, so be sure to play around in a safe percentage. Also, you want to make sure that you adjust the sun position in a way that light beams through the window to the interior. This ensures that the sunlight travels through the glass material, so the color sun shadows are a little more obvious. Now if you're using HDRI, you want to follow the same logic. Head over to your sky settings, select skybox as your source, and load an HDRI. Preferably HDRIs that show a clear sky. You also want to make sure that both of these options are checked. Specifically, make sure brightest point has sun direction is enabled. This will allow you to control the sun position with the rotation slider. And similarly, you want to rotate the HDRI so the light source is traveling from the window to the interior. So, so far, this is the scene that we have set up. This is a very simple window seat corner that can look very promising with sunlight coming from the exterior. With everything set, the last thing we have to do is set up our material. So we already have a glass material applied to our window object. So let's open the material editor and check the settings. For the albedo color, you want to keep this at either black or white. I will select black to achieve a more clear look. You want to avoid using a color here and I'll explain why later on in the video. Keep the roughness at 0% and adjust specular to your liking. Now the transparency are the most important. You want to keep the type to transmittance to give our glass semi-transparent properties. Leave frosted unchecked, opacity at 50% and refractive index at 1.5. These are the settings for a very basic architecture glass. These are no magic numbers, so adjust to your liking. Now the tint settings is what filters the sunlight through the glass material and give us colored sun shadows. So by selecting a color here, you can see how it affects the color of the glass, but also the sunlight that passes through the material. And this is why we need to keep the albedo color at either black or white, because using the color here can override the tint color effect on the glass and it can create a very artificial look. Keep in mind that lighter tint colors will allow more light to travel through the material versus if you're using darker colors, which block more light. You can also experiment and try other things. In this example, I use two separate materials, each of the window glass panel. 
Now because this feature doesn't support JPEGs yet, if you wanted to create stained glass, you would have to model each of the glass panels as well as setting each materials individually. Now that's an approach that may take a little bit of time, but the results can be quite rewarding as you can see on this example. And in case you want to adjust the sun shadow sharpness, head over to the atmosphere setting and play around with the shadow sharpness slider. As you can see, values closer to zero will blur out the shadows and values closer to 100 will sharpen the shadows. I've also tried exploring this feature a little more by using images in the base color. Basically had no luck and unfortunately it doesn't seem to affect the fog effect either. So it would be nice if in the near future we can see those settings incorporated. But for what it is for now, I think this is a very good feature. Now if you like the animation that you're seeing on the screen, you can click on this video to learn how to do so in Enscape. And if you've learned something new from this video, be sure to tag us on Instagram at TN3DStudios so I know that the video was helpful. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and follow us on other social media platforms and I'll see you guys next time.